Good uh, morning, everybody. Um, I um, think that probably uh, part of my remit in beginning the day is to, um, to activate your brains a little bit, ready for the, uh, the sensational speakers to come. So I think we're going to make today um, quite interactive. Um, what's the level of enthusiasm for interaction? Oh, okay, very good. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, this weird and strange world of, of cognitive techniques, of technology of the mind, and um, how one can use it at a practical level, but also how we've tried at Memorize to translate this, this extraordinary technology, um, which sits inside the brain, into a learning app which makes stuff fun. Now, um, I actually uh, fell into this path when I was uh, 18 years old, and um, I, I, I got a kind of transient form of arthritis, and, uh, which is fine, it kind of passed, but I ended up um, in a um, hospital ward with a bunch of um, octogenarians. And I'd never really spent much time with, um, with very old people before. But what, what I found really remarkable was how the same conversations would take place day after day um, with no apparent reference to the fact that they'd previously taken place. And so I decided to uh, take an interest in memory techniques. And um, I got a couple of books and uncovered this strange and delightful world um, of ancient and medieval memory techniques. And so there were these amazing stories of Roman generals who would learn all the names of their 10,000 soldiers and these strange things called memory palaces. And then these amazing technologies in books from the mid Middle Ages, which you can see here, where um, people would um, put together almost um, diagrams, but in a medieval sense, which would help people actually learn the contents of the book by using their imagination. Now, um, in, the, in the hospital, I was there for about three months, and, and I began kind of practicing um, learning things like packs of cards. Um, and to begin with, this was just a little hobby, but I quite soon discovered that, um, that in fact, this was actually um, a, a major draw for the nurses, who would come stand beside my bed and watch me recite packs of cards. And with this motivation, I, I then carried on and carried on practicing these techniques and ended up as, um, as was introduced as a um, grandmaster of memory. Now, this is not a title I found very useful in bars or nightclubs to, um, to, uh, to attract any attention, but it is nonetheless an interesting set of skills which can be applied to, to many different things. Now, um, this is a scene from, um, from one of the World Memory Championships. Um, in front of me is uh, Dr. Gunther Karsten, my arch rival from Germany. Uh, Dr. Gunther was, um, was the best, world's best uh, memorizer of binary numbers. Uh, he could remember 3,500, ones and zeros in half an hour. Um, at one point, I thought I was going to be a credible rival to him. And I remember a memorable scene by the swimming pool where, um, where I said, you know, Dr. Carsten, I'm going to take you down this year. Um, I, I, I've really been practicing my 1001, And uh, He wasn't very impressed. And then uh, he took, took me down, as it turned out. Uh, now, it took me a long while to um, find a kind of useful, practical application besides the sheer fun of learning. This is one um, abortive attempt. I, I learned um, the first book of Paradise Lost, which is a um, long and rather gloomy poem by a, um, a poet called John Milton. Um, and one time at Speaker's Corner in London, I recited it in a rainstorm, the only positive effect of which was that I made um, two small children burst into tears. Um, right, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to give you. I'm going to try and give you a memory demonstration. Um, and so I've got Frederick up in the sound booth, and Frederick is going to um, hopefully put a, a number where number goes here. And I'm going to try and uh, memorise this number for you. Um, and um, in the meantime, what I recommend you do is uh, talk among yourselves, and perhaps you could try and um, memorise the names of the people sitting to your right and to your left, um, and perhaps say hello and uh, wish them good day. I think the number might have to be slightly longer. OK, that'll, that'll do. We don't have all day. Um, I haven't done it yet. Keep talking to your, to your neighbors. <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to have one more look. Uh, so keep, keep talking, and then I'm going to see if I can recite the silly thing. Uh, And by the way, if you're, if you're um, feeling a little bit bored, do have a go at uh, learning it yourself. Um, it's quite, quite good fun. Okay, so um, those thanks, Frederick. That was probably um, um, good. So yeah, now the, the problem is I've actually got the speaker notes here. So um, so the number is um, yeah. So um, I'll sort of um, look decoratively to things. So yeah, the um, the number I hope is two zero one five three one five six four five three two one two zero 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 five six four four eight three two one zero two two six um six eight this is where it gets really entertaining four one uh three two um five six four five four five five six Three, two, um, uh, four, eight, uh, 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 three, five, four, eight. Um, oh, for goodness sake. Well, this is a useless memory demonstration. Um, uh, we're going to pass on. All right. So there are three key things we've got to do when you learn, and these are kind of techniques which have been known since ancient times and which apply very well to today. And they are to, to pay attention, um, to connect stuff together, and to actively repeat stuff. And in different forms, this applies to basically all forms of learning. So Dr. Johnson says the true art of memory is the art of attention. And the way we can actually pay attention to things and the way we can manipulate attention can take many different forms. So, for instance, um, you can form vivid imagery. You can really stare at something. Um, recently, some humorists created a, a typeface, rather well-named Sans Forgetica, which, um, which is basically optimally difficult to read. And it turns out that if you study with this font, you remember stuff much, much better because your brain is trying harder to remember things. So, Greetings, good people of Internet Dagana. My middle name is Arthur. OK, good. The second thing you do is, is narrative um, and any use of association. So let's say um, I want to uh, remember that apparently actually the word for disappointing if you don't have a stiff upper lip in Swedish is besvirke. But uh, apparently Ned is also disappointing. <laughs> Um, and if I were to try and remember this, I would think of Ned um, saying, you're a criminal. He's slandering me. Ned Slender. No, it sounds okay, very good. Um, and these kinds of connections are obviously just reflected in the brain. Um, and then active repetition is, is the third magic ingredient. Of course, um, we only really want to remember stuff that we actively repeat. So um, it's actually quite a good design feature, so we don't remember nonsense. Now, what we're going to do now is actually do a bit of um, interactive learning using these techniques. So we're going to remember this list of uh, 20 words all together, and we're going to do so very, very via a story. So I'm going to begin the story, and then I'm just going to get you to call out the next bit of the story. We're going to begin on the left-hand side, work down, and then carry on down the right-hand side. So, um, OK, a bomb goes off. What happens next? Ah, important thing to say, by the way, is um, trying to come up with an intelligent uh, second connection is the wrong approach. Just go with the first thing in your mind. So a bomb goes off. What happens next? Balloon laugh. OK, a balloon laugh. Superb. What happens then? OK, great. So a bomb goes off, the balloon laughs, the lights go off. What happens after that? OK, there's, okay, there's a woman called Beryl, very good. And she goes to buy some, well, she may as well buy a boar if we're going to put it in the story rather than a coffee. Um, OK, so there's a woman called Beryl, she decides to buy a boar. What happens next? And she pays for the boar with some coal. It's a really great scenario. What happens after that? OK, great. A knight comes along riding an ox, and where do they go? Okay, florist, very good. What's in the florist? Neon flowers, excellent. And then um, after the neon flowers, um, where do they, well, what happens next? They go for lunch, and served for lunch is exclusively salt. Um, and then what happens after that? 
Um, a magnet, yes, that's right. So um, a, a magnet hoves into view. Um, and what does a magnet do? Well, it sucks up Alan, who turns out to be the name of the night. Um, and so Beryl's left without Alan. What does she do? Yes, she goes on her computer. And she looks up fossils. Um, and what does she discover about fossils? Yes, they're made of sulfur. Very good. And so again, we're just going for the first associations we can find. Made of sulfur. And so, oh no, she's appalled by the fact that, um, that uh, fossils are made from sulfur. So what does she do? She jumps into the pool, very good. And the Argos catalog is a bit of a British reference. It's like Amazon in the 1980s. Um, but anyway, she's going to read the Argos catalog in the pool. Um, and then what happens after that? OK, fair enough. OK, she smokes some pot. And what is the, uh, what is the consequence of that? OK, her teeth fall out, good. So um, could, we, um, could we black out the screen? I'm not sure. If Okay, so um, I'm going to take you through the story. A bomb goes off, a balloon comes out, it causes the, the lights to go off, um, and then there's a woman called Beryl, um, and she's Beryl's buying a boar, and she's paying for the boar with coal, um, and so then luckily a light comes along, riding an ox, takes her to a florist, which has got lots of neon flowers, um, and so she goes for lunch. Um, and so for lunch she has some salt, uh, but unfortunately, a magnet comes along and sucks up her dinner companion, Alan. Um, she's distressed by this, so she gets out her computer, and her computer, she looks up uh, fossils, which she discovers are made from sulfur, and then uh, this is a bit of an alarming thing for her. So she goes into the pool, reads the Argos catalog, smokes some pot, and her teeth fall out. <laughs> okay, so, well, don't you clap. Um, we're now going to see if you can recite this list of 20 things. So um, all together now, no mumbling. The first item is a bomb. bomb. Very good. And nice and loud, no mumbling. First item is a bomb. Look very good. Barrel. 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 Very good. Alan. Computer, very good. Amazing, yeah, very good. So, um, so well, I'll give yourselves a round of applause. Um, so this is an example of how memory techniques can be used to um, narrative and repetition and, and vivid imagery to do some learning. This would be a way of learning, by the way, the first 20 elements of the periodic table by association. We're not going to go into this. Now, the, thing, the point I want to make here is that these techniques are fairly universal and they've been around for, for thousands of years. And the question is, how can we apply them to things that are new? And there's this great Goethe quote, which I always love to read, um, tags wisdom, um, which um, which is, I think, a very useful one. It's like all truly wise thoughts have been thought already thousands of times, but to make them truly ours, we must think them over again honestly until they take root in our personal experience. Now, I want to share a few experiences we've had at Memrise trying to translate some of these ideas using kind of modern contemporary internet te technology into things which help people learn languages effectively. So um, our mission at Memorize is to kind of enrich people's uh, minds in order to enrich their worlds. Um, and we're used by about 35 million people um, learning about 200 different language pairs, um, learning kind of billions of things a month. And uh, basically, it's a kind of holistic language learning app with lots of fun, fun modes in it. And um, this is kind of what we're trying to build product-wise. I want to kind of draw out four things from this, which we then apply with our learning tech. First, we want to help anyone fall in love with and, and learn a language. So it's got to be effective. Um, we want people to fall in love with languages, not just sort of study them. So we want to make it enchanting. Um, it's got to be quite fast if they're going to do it in a few months. Because uh, if it takes longer, that would be a Ned Slender. Um, and um, it's got to be fun. So here's um, a quick whistle-stop tour behind some of the ways we've used technology to help us with this. So the first thing is around effectiveness. Let's imagine you're trying to learn some Chinese characters. It's pretty intimidating. In fact, you find yourself in downtown Beijing. You need to go to the loo. You need to know which door to go through. Now, um, this is the character for woman. We want to make it vivid. So we want to imagine a woman doing a little bit of um, yoga. 
Um, and so there's a woman doing some yoga. That'll help you remember that one. Um, and then this is the character for strength. And so to imagine this and to remember that it's strength, you might think of a character like, uh, like this, um, looking quite strong with his large arm. Um, this, meanwhile, is the character for a field. And so um, a field, you might think of many ways of remembering this, a field seen aerially, but I think of it as sort of a field through a window. Now, combining these things together, the character which is over here, which means male, is a combination of field and strength. And so we've got field and strength. We can combine them together to think of a man who's strong in the field, and that means male. Okay, now a quick test on this. What does, what does that mean? Woman. Good. What does that mean? Very good. What does that mean? Very good. And then what does that mean? Oh, which door are you going to go through? Point now. Okay, very good. Um, cool. So enchantment is the second thing. We've got to make stuff rich and entertaining. Um, and we had a problem because we were a kind of classic sort of London tech startup. You're sitting in an office and it's really boring. So we had this thought that, that because um, the internet now can sustain very rich media, I think believe this is being live streamed, um, we should sort of get out of the office and um, take a look around uh, Europe to where things are slightly more entertaining. So we had this vision of going around Europe on a bus. So we got a bus. Um, we painted it. Uh, we did a Kickstarter for, to help the bus go around Europe. Um, we put beds at the top, um, and then we went on this little tour around Europe. Or well, this was the original intent of the tour. Unfortunately, we actually broke down in Sweden, um, and that was as far as we got. But um, the result was that we collected tens of thousands of videos of native speakers in context to bring language turning to life. And I just want to show you just a little mini collection of some of the amusing faces we, we caught along Je the way. Je suis journaliste. Parce que c'est la femme de mes rêves. Señoras y señores. Salud. A prática leva a perfeição. Bon dia. Capisci? Accettate carte. Das ist mein Hund. Danke. Rollut. Will er mir öl? Prosit. Dooley. Um, so a bit of fun, um, and what we found was that this kind of rich content um, significantly enchants learning. It's basically more entertaining to discover language talked by, uh, by people who you might want to sort of hang out with or, um, or what have you. So um, the third thing is speed, and um, one of the difficulties of making learning really fast is that cognitive science isn't a kind of complete discipline, and there's lots of sort of contradictory results. It's unclear what recipe of all the discoveries of cognitive science should lead to the fastest way of learning. So we did this quite fun thing, which was we created a, um, a, a prize for different cognitive science labs to come up with the fastest way to learn 100 words. And then we got like tens of thousands, we, we built these different methodologies which these labs created. And we raced them alongside each other. So we had tens of thousands of users try out these different methodologies. And, and sort of lots of cool universities took part, MIT, UCL. Um, MIT, quite amusingly, um, they didn't make it to the, the final set. And they complained that their students who they tested their method on were too intelligent. And therefore, they weren't able to beat the control condition. Um, but anyway, um, one of the winning teams was, was from Oxford, a, a team um, led by um, a guy called Summerfield. Um, and I just want to try to show you part of the cool technology they created um, in a little animation, which uh, shows uh, basically behind the scenes how to introduce words on the left, um, their estimate of recall probability in the middle, and then their estimate of basically how strong each memory is. And it gives a kind of inside view of what's going on behind the scenes in the mind as you learn. So over here, we have all the words being introduced. There's 100 words. And you can see that they're introduced gradually slower over time. And those dots underneath the curve are where the words repeated. Um, this is the kind of um, estimated probability that each word will be recalled. And it's quite fun to think in your mind the millions of memories. All of them have a kind of a probability of being recalled and are fading until, until you repeat them. And then here is like the strength of the, of the trace, which is to say, this shows like, how much that memory is leaking or fading at any point in time. Um, anyway, it was quite fun to see this sort of um, advanced cognitive science applied to learning in order to uh, make it speedier. 
Um, final thing, just a, a small one to go, is we try to make learning fun. And so part of fun is that fun is more often in the world than it is inside your mobile phone. Um, this is one of the drawbacks of the fact that, um, you know, um, due to the uprising of social media, we all spent most of our social lives um, on Facebook. Um, anyway, um, so what we wanted to do is that we wanted to take the, um, the experience of learning and bring it out into the world and help people recognize things. So we use this kind of quite fun, contemporary technology, which is called deep learning, um, to train things to recognize uh, objects. Um, and um, this proved actually quite difficult. So for instance, this is um, the head of QA in the company who's been misrecognized as a hairdryer. Um, so we, uh, we had to train that. And then um, often some quite surprisingly difficult things to disambiguate. So you can recognize glasses, but if you train that too much, you begin to recognize um, bicycles. Um, and so we had a big tweak, and we ended up with um, what I think is quite a nice way of doing things, which I describe as an, an optimistic machine intelligence. And so rather than the normal kinds of machine intelligence bias, which get everyone really upset, um, we have a kind of optimistic system, which kind of interprets your world to be just slightly better than you'd otherwise hope it would be. Um, and so, um, so this is a, another little way of applying technology to, to make learning um, entertaining and fun. So um, yeah, in conclusion, I suppose uh, one way of kind of summarizing all of this is to say that you know, there are these timeless technologies of the mind. They've been around since medieval times, since ancient times, about how to pay attention to stuff how to ignite it with imagination and how to link it together with charisma so that it stays in the mind. And then you have your kind of opportune technologies of the day, which are always growing and changing. And the kind of art, of, I guess, of building learning product is to combine the two in, in the most, um, in the most um, succinct way possible. Um, and so just as a final repetition, do you know which door you're going to be going through? Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please stay with us for a moment, Ed. Uh, thank you so much for this inspiring talk. Um, I'm sure everyone here enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, I would love to ask you a question on this, or a few, actually, I have many, but we'll start with just one. Um, so once you've actually trained your memory like this, what are the greatest challenges that you might have, and what's the best part about having such an amazing memory? So one thing to be very clear, by the way, is that this isn't a kind of permanent um, upgrade to your brain. It's a sort of, um, it's a, as, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah. uh, Bomb, but anyway, balloon, uh, barrel, <laughs> something, something. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so you, have to, you have to kind of pay attention and turn it on. It's a bit like, um, you know, if you're really fast at running, it doesn't mean you get around town fast. You actually do have to run. Um, and so um, the biggest um, challenge is that um, it's, it's deeply offensive to people if you don't remember them if you're a memory champion. And so, um, right. so the biggest challenge is that you have to really pay attention at drinks parties where you're just trying to sort of, you know, drown your sorrows and, um, you know, enjoy the, the pretend champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Thank you very much, Ed. My pleasure. Thank we you. have a little present for you before yeah. you go off the stage. Oh. We at the Swedish Internet Foundation, we are uh, every year trying to come up with something that will make it as difficult as possible for our uh, keynote speakers to get through the airport security. <laughs> and this year, uh, no, but we, uh, we are this passionate. This is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are passionate about teaching kids how to code and to cope in the new digital society. This is a little kit that makes you help you uh, build your own robot. And oh, it's cool. either for you or for a small one in your life. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Thank you so much.